everyone, and welcome to another session of Today we're covering Media Composer, relinking from low res to high res. Uh, we're so happy you're able to join us today. So we're gonna quickly go through our housekeeping items for those following on Zoom. Uh, as you know, the session will be recorded. We do this so we can post them back to avid.com uh, so everybody can go back and review the sessions if they miss part of it. You can also ask questions. If you have questions on social feed, please enter them in and I can get them over to Mary Ann. Also, we love to give shout outs, so let us know where you're watching us from. And we do have Mary Ann Post today, our great avid master instructor that's been doing amazing stories with these media composer sessions. Um, so Mary Ann, I know as usual, we have a lot to do in a short amount of time. So I will go ahead and hand it your way. All right, thanks Don. Hey everybody, I hope everybody's doing well. And yep, today we are talking about going from low resolution to high resolution footage. And the steps aren't really that challenging. It's more about the setup and then probably answering some questions as to why uh, we do this. So I'm gonna start by sharing my screen. Make sure everything's all set here. And then I'm just gonna pop back over to Zoom just in case Don has to come in and talk to me and make sure I'll be able to hear. Yep, all good, okay. And then I'm going to hide my screen controls here so we get a nice clean setup. Okay, so everything's hidden and we're good to go. So I'm in Media Composer. So we're talking going from low res to high res today. And basically why we want to go from low res to high res and how to get there the most efficiently. So right now I just have a source bin and this actually is a fairly typical source bin for me because I work in short form. Um, thanks to time constraints, I made a really short project, but the process is gonna be identical, whether you're working on a short project like this or hours and hours of footage for your documentary, your unscripted reality show, your feature film, that kind of thing. And going to low res allows you to save space, especially if you need to be portable, you're working with your own drives and you need to be able to move around. So I've already done some of the work here. So just to describe my bin a bit, I created a project with a variety of footage. So I brought up a bunch of columns here and you'll see I have various frame rates, which I've also included in the short sequence I built, various formats, I've got some red footage going on in here, uh, which is still the linked footage. Some of this was iPhone footage. Uh, some of it's just stock footage that I grabbed from a great resource uh, called Pixabay, that kind of thing. Now here it all says, oh, DNxHR low bandwidth because this is the optimized footage. Um, but if you look at the format, the source format for everything was maintained. So how did I get there? Well, first of all, when I set up the project, I kept in mind where I'm going. And I just hit shift command equals super fast, shift control equals on Windows, so you don't have to go to file and settings. And in the format tab, I'm actually set up for HD, but the most important part of this is the frame rate. Cause you can, I can change my family, meaning if I need to output it ultra HD, UHD format, I'll be able to do that so you can see uh, it changes my resolution, that kind of thing uh, at the end, but I can't change my frame rate. So you wanna be thinking about where is this going? What are the delivery requirements? That kind of thing. Uh, as far as then optimizing this, I'm just gonna optimize my footage for HD, but I'm gonna maintain most of the source uh, settings. And in order to do that, you want to link your footage, okay? So for linking, um, I'm going to just uh, open up a bin here. And in my bin, I've got, uh, let's see, I just opened the wrong bin. Hold on one second, there we go. Okay, import versus link, there it is. So I have a linked clip and then a imported version because a lot of questions that come up for, with students is that 
they'll want to just import because that's what they're used to doing in other programs. Well, when I import, if I go to my source settings, I just right clicked one to source settings. My raster size is lowered to 1920 by 1080 because that's the settings that I had set up. So this is no longer the original um, size of footage. When and I don't have any of any in camera options for my source settings either. If those happen to exist, because they've all been baked in during the import. Whereas when I link. I'm just right clicking source settings. When I link, I'm seeing the full screen. I have the full resolution, everything. So if I need to do something like we were, I was talking about a couple sessions ago, uh, sizing to match project raster, that kind of thing, need to do any change of framing, but maintain high quality or simulate high quality, I can. Okay, so you wanna link and then transcode. Okay, so we've got that. So how did I do this so-called transcode? And I'm just gonna command double click to open my source bin so it's in a free floating window. And all of these are done thanks to time, but I have a couple of shots that are in the red uh, codec. And so all I had to have to do it to get ready for the edit, that kind of thing, is select these. If it's a full source bin, select all and do it. That's how I originally started, minus these two uh, clips. If you've got multiple source bins, you've organized maybe by type or if you've organized by um, another fashion, then you'll just go to those bins and do each one of those. All right, so I'm gonna right click on this and choose uh, consolidate transcode. And you're gonna transcode, all right? Now I already did a transcode in this project, so I'm just gonna quickly take this back to the default. So this is where the hangup can happen or can cause an issue down the road. When you do your transcode, so you wanna make sure you choose transcode and select your drive. When you do your transcode, you wanna keep everything at the source level. So not the project by default. And one hint that's gonna tell you that you haven't chosen to keep everything at source, so you have all that flexibility to work with your source uh, raster dimensions, is you'll see ABC intra HD. And when you go to use um, the media composer options for media type, DNX, it'll be HD instead of HR. So we wanna see HR here. Uh, so those are your two hints. And then what you wanna choose is source dimensions from the raster dimensions pop up. And you wanna choose keep sources frame rate, okay? All right, then uh, you're ready to transcode. And you can, you can use different options. Um, I'm using DNXHR uh, low bandwidth because that's gonna save space. And you can even see when you choose these, how much space is gonna be required. Okay, so I have pretty short uh, clips here, so not a lot, right? Um, as opposed to like high quality is gonna take a, a lot more, all right? And you've got your Apple Pro Res options and that kind of thing, but you can use those. Just keep your source dimensions, source frame rate, they're all good. So I'm gonna go ahead and transcode those. There they go. And you can color code your sources. Uh, so while this is going, so I can color code my sources, I just right clicked on the color column with both of these clips selected and chose green. So if you're coming in from different formats, different frame rates, uh, that kind of thing, you can come up with your own color coding uh, system. For me, it was just a quick way to identify which ones weren't done yet and which ones are doing. So you can see it takes, takes a moment. My total bin was about six minutes. So when I did uh, my first test with everything last night, um, it took about four minutes to do. So just kind of um, thinking that through. Okay, so I do show that I'm DNXHR low bandwidth right now, but notice my original raster dimensions are there. So if I do need to go in and play around with frame flex settings at all, I can still do that. Okay, and then I just go ahead and cut all this stuff in my timeline, make any changes, that kind of thing. So I've got a sequence built. Let's go ahead and add this guy. 
Um, just going to minimize that a second. So I'm just going to set an in and an out. I'm just using I and O to be quick. And then we'll just we could say he goes here, do some track selecting. And um, we'll just use this video. And we'll do his audio as well. There we go. Perfect. OK, so I've got all that. So you just keep doing all your editing and that kind of thing. And then in my timeline, I've got my adapters that are telling me that in this case, I've got of this shot that I've got temporal and then I've got, which is a frame rate difference. This is 25p footage. I've got spatial, that's because this is larger than 1920 by 1080. And it's also in a different color space. I think it's RGB color space. So I've got all that information in here, which also means that if I need to, I can go into effects mode and with this clip active, I can go in and make frame flex adjustments, which if I had imported all this and not matched my source settings and that kind of thing, I wouldn't have frame flex, you gotta do resize, you lose quality. And then that makes the conform more challenging later, okay? So if you've been wondering why link and then transcode as opposed to just go ahead and import it, that is your reasoning. So it's worth that step to maintain that detail. Also, color management wise, uh, you want to keep that as well. Um, and we talked about color management a couple sessions ago. So then what I do once I actually before I start editing uh, is I will take my linked footage and put it into like a linked source bin. I keep it. These are just pointing back to the original source files. So there we go. So they're all um, there together. And then I'll start creating like what I call working bins. So things like my graphics here don't stay in a source bin. They go into a graphics bin. Um, if I've got interviews, those go into an interview bin and all that kind of stuff. And I just usually just hold down my option key, alt on window, drag those over and make copies. So I have lots of copies of stuff because it's just the pointer data. I'm not copying the media. Okay. So then when it comes time to finalize after everything's been edited, as long as you kept the source frame rate and the source settings, all right? Um, and let me just, uh, just to quickly show you what I'm referring to once again, these, I should be fine. And one thing I didn't apply, because I usually don't, I ignored this apply source transformations. I didn't bake into the DNX HR uh, media, the color encoding and frame flex. So that's that those options are still there. So as long as you do this, relinking should be super simple. And there's a couple strategies for that. And I'm gonna go with the if I have the space and that kind of thing, I like to keep all of my media online. And just in case, and just relink to the high quality footage and then do my final sequence transcode. And so that's my ideal situation. Also, it's ideal to save early and save often. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that real fast. So where is all of this gonna happen? Um, so I've got my sequences bin. Let me just go back to my edit workspace here. Um, didn't map that today. So I've got my sequences bin and I'm just gonna pull this out. Um, and normally I have lots of versions um, in setup. I was gonna duplicate this a few times to simulate, but guess what? The, let's just do a quick duplicate and we'll say that this version two is our final um, in the land of wishful thinking. So here's my final. All edited, all all done, ready to take it online so I can do things like my any color grading or tracking, anything that was the chroma king, anything that I want the highest quality footage possible. All right, so I've got that, but I don't do it in this bin. I create an online bin. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So it's so you guys don't see me secretly doing a bunch of keyboard shortcuts. I just right click in the left panel my bin container panel and chose new bin. And I'm just gonna call this online seat. So for my online sequence. 
And then I'm gonna take a copy of my final over. All right, and after I get this set up, I always say, just in case things go well, and then you go live on Zoom, so you don't know what, what's gonna happen. All right, so I've got my copy. And then what I wanna do is link to the high resolution footage, okay? So let's look, take a look at this. I'm gonna go ahead and load it so you can kind of see what's gonna happen. When I do the consolidate transcode, those copies of source clips uh, got a dot new extension on them, okay? Because they made copies of it and to differentiate the two. You can actually take those extensions off if those bother you. For me, I'm so used to it. It kind of helps me see what's the consol or the consolidated transcode in media versus uh, linking back to the original. So then my step is gonna be here to right click and relink. Okay. And there's a lot going on in here. Most of this is for troubleshooting. And uh, I set up kind of by default for troubleshooting just in case. So I'm gonna be looking for media on my drives. And then the things I pay closest attention to is I match case when compares, comparing source names. Um, that's a big one for me. Uh, in this case, I'm just relinking to video on my current project, but if you uh, borrowed elements, sometimes you have to expand that search, like if I opened a bin from another project. But right now I'm just trying to relink stuff that I created for this specific project. And my relink method, here's the key, is gonna be highest quality, okay? So I wanna make sure that I'm looking at highest quality possible. And then uh, I already created my new sequence. So I don't really need another copy. And I'm gonna relink across frame rates. Otherwise that can be an issue, all right? So actually, um, I don't want this format because not all my footage is uh, 24p. So I wanna make sure I go to any for video format. So the keys with that, once again, is I tend to leave match case when comparing source names. It ups my chances for success. I relink to any video format because the formats are some is red, some is iPhone, some stock footage I downloaded from uh, a stock footage site. And then highest quality that should push to the linked footage and then linking across rates. I highly recommend making your copy of your sequence. You take control rather than automating it with a media composer. So this is the what the dialog box should look like. And then I'm gonna click okay, and it's doing this. And now when I look in my sequence, I still, I don't have the dot new on any of these, okay? Now, um, that worked out really, really well because I've, followed my advice when I set up this uh, class. But if you have stuff that doesn't go online, it'll show up in your timeline red um, because of in our timeline fast menu, we've got the clip color options where you can show different mixed rates and then media offline's red, which is why I never label any colors anywhere in Media Composer red as much as I like that color because I don't want to start thinking that my stuff's offline when it's not. Um, but you can change these colors. So I could change this you know, to orange and that kind of thing. So you can make them bright and that, so they're recognizable on the timeline too. All right, so I've got that. And then the final step getting ready for online is to transcode my final sequence. And if stuff, stuff's missing, troubleshoot that missing media. Well, I can troubleshoot that by actually just right-clicking in my sequences bin. And actually, I'm just doing it, gonna do a quick save because we've had awesome luck today. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and choose, right-click right in my bin and choose set bin display. All right, so this is a great troubleshooting feature. And then anything that is edited in the sequence will show up in this bin if I just show reference clips. So you can actually refer to a list of all the clips that were actually used in your sequence. So here's where you can find at C that this is not a major documentary. <laughs> it is actually um, quite a few short shots, but you have your big list and you can go through here and you'll see all my video is linked. And that's just showing that I successfully went back to the original linked 
media. Now, if it doesn't and materials offline, I did actually create a bin view. Let me just uh, uh, point that out a second. I called it source. I had it up earlier, but didn't really point it out. And in this view, I actually have things like duration, which tracks, the codec, the video, the dimensions, frame rates, and all that kind of thing. And whether or not the media is offline. So offline, that would be the key. And generally, you can just open your source browser. And when you navigate to that location, it'll come back. Okay. And you know, it'll come into the sequence because of that reference files. Okay. Okay. So then for my uh, final, what I'll do is transcode this to whatever I'm going to be outputting at uh, for final output. Uh, just because of working with compatible sources, even though you can link to it, doesn't mean it's going to play back smoothly. Um, and I do have a resource just to show you guys that will help you with that because I use this all the time because I'm a creative, this stuff I don't memorize. I have cheat sheets and one sheets that help me get through all these steps as I need it. So um, let me just turn off my bin display a second. I'm gonna do set bin display. So I'm gonna transcode this for final output, okay? So the final high res. So this is where you wanna make sure your settings are set. Um, if your destination is going to be, you know, HD, there we go. We've got it set. If it's going to be uh, multiple outputs, you can figure that out later um, during the export process. But if one of my exports is going to be UHD or uh, 4K or whatever the delivery specs, call that up now because that's what we're going to be transcoding for. So in my case, I'm just going to do uh, 1080. And then I'm going to right click and consolidate transcode once again. Um, and this time you can create a new sequence. Okay, because I'm transcoding the sequence. And once again, transcode, and this is all linked media. Handle, um, that's just in case there's emergency changes at the end. So you get a little bit of handle. So if I, my clip's five seconds in the timeline, I'll actually, the new source clip will be. Uh, media that's nine seconds, two seconds on each side for 24p. And then once again, I just use the source because you don't know um, when the client, you're done, you've got approval to output and the client says, oh, wait, <laughs> one more change. So my final two, the final becomes final two and then final three and so forth. We all know how that could go. So um, I will keep this as the highest rate possible with source dimensions and uh, frame rates. And then I don't um, apply these. So I'm just trying to make it all consistent, uh, avid optimized media is essentially my goal. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and transcode. And then um, this should go quick. This is why I didn't create like a two hour documentary or uh, episodic reality show, uh, cause it does take a second. So it's just taking the pieces that were there. Like one of these shots was probably like 45 seconds. So it's, I might've used like four seconds of this logo that was originally 10 seconds. Um, and it all will, um, bake in just fine. So while this is going, I'm going to take a chance here and go over to Safari. So I wanted to show you guys uh, this if I can, the, my stuff's a little hidden. Um, I just wanna show that you can find out compatible sources by going to Avid's website. And I called some of this up to save time. Uh, so from Avid's website, when you go to Media Composer, you can go to the guides and other resources. But basically where you wanna head to is the um, knowledge base, which has all the documentation. So for like 2021 um, documentations where I'm at. And what you wanna find is the supported video file formats. And then when you get there, it's actually a PDF that you can download. And then you can check out how all the different formats interact, okay? 
Um, and then some considerations as far as with linking, transcoding, consolidate, um, and that, because uh, we could go through all those scenarios too when we have more time together. All right, so then here's my uh, transcoded. It didn't make the copy. And when I double click this, this is all ready for output. Um, and you can see that because it's got like the dot new on the clips. All right, so we're all good and it should all output fine. So with that, I am going to pop back over to Zoom and see if there's any questions. All right, Mary Ann, actually, and I'm gonna pop your video back up. I did pause your video. So we will get you pop back up here so everyone can see you because you're in that corner. We want to make sure everybody can see everything. So I'll go ahead and restart your video as well. If you do have questions, go ahead and ask them um, at this time. Uh, you can either ask within the Zoom app or on our social feeds. And we'll see which questions we have coming in here. Let's see. Looking around. <laughs> Uh, someone asked if you could share some of your your cheat sheets that you use. <laughs> and I, think, I don't know if I'd be able to read your. <laughs> yeah, uh, they're very much in Marianne speak. <laughs> so, I don't know if Google <laughs> translate that, um, but yeah, I just right. shared like uh, this whole workflow is all from one of my cheat sheets. Okay, uh, let's see. We do have a question coming in from QMax. Uh, if you use 3D warp for a zoom in on the timeline, when I relink the original 4K footage, the quality will, will be preserved, or the only way is to use a big zoom at full quality and using frame flex. Yeah, you want to use frame flex because when you use 3D warp, you're actually zooming into pixels. It doesn't. 3D warp doesn't link to the original footage. It actually uh, just zooms in, scales up. So you're zooming into pixels. So what you want to do, like if I'm on, a, on this lovely car shot, if I want to, uh, you know, create a zoom at all, I can just tap into frame flex because it's going to link to the original raster resolution because I kept all that. So I can actually zoom into the car over time. And this isn't gonna be an awesome example because it's on the fly. There we go. So let's see what that turns yeah. out, how that turned out. But yeah, so I'm not zooming into pixels because I've got that four or 5K resolution. All right, awesome. It looks like we answered the question. Let's see if we have any other questions coming in. Um, let's see. Originally, I was a premier editor. Is there a better way to go from offline online without getting rid of the MXF folder? without getting rid of the MXF folder. Um, going from online, offline to online without getting rid of the MXF folder. I'm not sure what you're asking, but if you're asking for like the workflow where you delete media, uh, you can use your media tool to do that. So if you wanna take your media offline, I don't go in at the desktop and start deleting MXF folders because I might delete something very important, but I can get, I just went to tools and media tool. Uh, I know all my media is on this drive. I'm gonna go current project. So that's probably listed down here. And then what I do when I delete the media is I don't delete the linked master clips because the, the media composer is actually tracking where those are. And if I delete those, uh, that connection, it basically deletes the connection, not the actual clips in the bin that's going to be a problem. But so I'll go to master clips. And then I have a combination of like audio and video. If you're just doing straight up cutting video together without any audio and, and that, you can actually just select all and then delete this and then go ahead and do your relink. Um, 
but if you just want to take offline what you edited into your timeline, you can actually, uh, this is pre transcoded So this is the high res one. Um, if I'm had this all linked or uh, the low res before, what you can do is then right click your sequence and select media relatives. And then it's just highlighting what I used in my sequence over in my media tool. Okay, so there's some audio stuff in here. Um, apparently, uh, that's all I used. Okay, but um, it will. <laughs> Not sure why it didn't. Uh, let's go. Let's just so we can get an example going here. Just grab this sequence. Media relatives. Okay, there we go. So this is kind of what I'm looking for in the offline. Um, the reason the other one didn't, because that's the high res and I turned off linked clips. Okay, so if this were the low res, it will select these and then I can just go through and say, okay, I'm not gonna be deleting audio. So I can even just hit delete and I can make sure that, um, that's I'm in the wrong spot. Let's not delete from the bin. Make sure your media tool is active. You know you're deleting from your media tool and you have no options to delete your clips. All right, don't media manage when you're tired or doing a Q and A. Um, so then I could say, okay, just delete the video. And when I delete the video, it should be able to just go relink. But you don't need to go through your drives. I wouldn't want to do that. I would make way too many mistakes and blow out stuff I need. So use your use your media tool. Hopefully that helps. All right, awesome. We do have one other question. I think we can fit in here, and these have been great questions. Uh, so thank you all for asking. Yeah. That. Uh, when bringing media into Media Composer, what metadata do you recommend adding to the clips? Like sound roll, disc label, et cetera. What's your recommendation yeah. there? Whatever you need to get through um, that portion of the edit. So I have different uh, column views uh, that I use. Like right now I'm in um, my webinar setting, so I don't really have my special column views. But the main thing I need in this situation is, um, and I know this isn't a source spin, but I'll get you there, um, is duration. I like to see tracks. I definitely like to see video so I can see whether or not it's uh, Avid uh, native or camera native, um, my raster dimensions. Um, I don't always call up frame rate. Sometimes it's a nice quick reference because a lot of times the format that gives you both, it'll give you the frame size and the frame rate all in one and then offline. So this is what I call up. If there's other camera details I need, um, then I'll call those up in addition uh, to that. So whatever you think you're gonna need to get ready for the edit or get ready for the offline. But to get ready for the offline in a, you know, in a linked situation, this is what I use um, for sure. And I keep it simple because I'm not a spreadsheet person and this reminds me of a spreadsheet, so. Uh, I try to do that. So then I'll have other views as I'm like getting ready to organize my dailies, uh, that kind of thing into working bins. I have different setups and that kind of thing. But yeah, for media management, this is, this is it, keeping it simple. All right. Thank you, Marianne. Um, we did have one last basic question come in. I'm going to go ahead and get that over to you. And that is, is it possible for audio tracks to be grouped into one track on a timeline if you have more than 20 tracks? So your source has more than 20? Um, so, yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I would, that'd be nice. Um, let me just go to show my that really breath. quick. I know you might not be yeah. <laughs> Let me just go into okay. my source browser and then I'll just go to link. I'll assume you're linking and then I'll just go to settings and then under uh, my audio, here's your options. So if you've got all that, it depends on how it's how it was set up. But if you're working with uh, 20 source tracks, the, then you're probably working with something with surround sounds. You can set those up so they don't come in as individual tracks. Um, but you, you need to set that up. I've never dealt with a source that unless, yeah, typically not dealing with a source that's got that many tracks and you need to worry about um, because it's been organized differently. As far as can I like video, we can collapse, like if I had 30 tracks composite, I can collapse those into one 
if you're saying, hey, I've got all these sources where I've got voice, I've got sound effects, I've got music, I've got all this layered audio tracks. No, we don't have anything like that for um, a collapse feature for audio, just video. So hopefully that covers all potential that questions. I will see if they come back with additional. So let me go ahead and I'll go ahead and whoops, I'll go ahead and share my screen so we can show the next session. Uh, let's get that up here. Um, so we can see your upcoming sessions. We're waiting to see if that answered the question. So as you see, we're back on August 26th and then September 2nd, where Mary Ann is going to be covering audio efficiency tips. So we're excited for those. Whoops, that should be one and two, it's not one and one. So sorry about that typo. Um, but yeah, so we'll be back on August 26th and we hope to have you attending those sessions. And please drop us a note if there is content you'd like to see, we're working on the future schedules and we'd love to get your comments on what you would like to see added to that calendar. Uh, so drop us a line at live online learning at avid.com. And I think we're good, Marianne. So we'll let you get right. on with your day and we'll thank everyone for joining. All right. Thanks, guys. Take care. Have a good one.